So the first thing I want to do is to kill the white of the canvas. Sometimes when we work directly onto white, it can be a little bit intimidating, and it's sometimes nice to have a bit of a wash that will act as a mid-tone as well to work into. So I am going to put a, a warm colour, because I want to really uh, show the warmth of the skin. So let's look at the palette. How can we make that? Um, I'm going to take a bit of turps onto this brush. This is a two-inch um, hog bristle brush. Not a lot of turps, just a tiny bit, just to sort of loosen up the palette and get the brush nice and fluid. We're going to take a bit of the yellow ochre and the cadmium red, mix those together. It's going to give me a nice warm kind of, let's just see how that works. Okay, so that's a really good start. So I already, my the reason I've gone from the top right to the bottom left is I like that sort of design, the angle from the top of the head down to the bottom. Now, most of this is going to get completely painted over, but Bits of it will be seen around the edge of the face and it will give me something to work into and it's just quite a nice opportunity to make some marks, particularly with a big brush. So if you have a big brush there that you're always afraid to use, now's the time to get it out and see what happens. I feel like a proper artist, slap that on. Okay, so I've just scribbled some marks in there. Now, if I start painting oil straight on top of this, I'm going to hit a problem because that is quite wet and greasy and any brush strokes or oil brush strokes put on top of that won't stick. And also this stuff will mix in with those brush strokes. Now, if you're doing this with acrylic, you'd be fine because that would be dry in seconds and you could put another layer on top. Um, but because I'm working with oil, I just want to take the worst of that greasiness away. So take a piece of uh, kitchen paper or a rag and just rub that over. So it's taking off the worst of the moisture, the pigment. You'll still got the colour. It will lighten a little bit, but that's not a problem. And you just want to do that a few times until you can't really see your finger anymore. That streak going through. And it doesn't have to be bone dry, but enough to like that. But stop any problems going through. And I might do um, a couple more, just a hint of red and just a little dark. And again, not much terps, let's just... And we'll see how that goes, and I'll just leave that on there like that. So let's look now at the composition. Let's get it drawn in. Now I say draw, I'm gonna draw this with a brush. I'm not gonna draw it with a pencil or some charcoal. You can do that, but I find that if you draw a really good drawing with a pencil or a piece of charcoal, you'll spend ages doing a good drawing and then you'll be terrified about painting it in. And I like to draw with the brush. It kind of gives me a little bit more fluidity and a little bit more freedom. Now, as long as you keep the paint thin, so using the mineral spirits, you'll be absolutely fine. So you can see how on the palette, it's almost the consistency of single cream. Okay, really quite thin. Let's take a little bit of black and this will be the sort of the, the drawing medium that I work in. I don't want it too dark. Let's just take that a bit warmer up there. Okay, so I'm going to draw out, roughly speaking, the head using this mixture. So how do we start? Let's just get this bit bigger and think about where I'm working from. So I want the head to sort of fit in this area here. I want it to be, you know, roughly speaking, life size. So my hand is a good indication of helping me gauge the life size mark because the wider span of your hand is, is roughly the sort of width of, of someone's head from the bottom of the chin to the top of the forehead. So that gives me a good starting point. And then I can look at um, you know the actual overall shape of the head. So you've got this, I suppose like an almond shape, this beautiful oval. It's quite good to sort of name, give a shape and name like the head for example, an oval or something that's round or rectangular. That'll just help you see it a little more objectively and paint it hopefully more accurately as well. Um, and we've got sort of a neck coming down here. And it's just about making some just loose marks and just seeing what happens. Sort of, I suppose I'm sketching with the paint. I'm not thinking in any huge amount of detail or precision. I just want something that'll start to vaguely indicate where things might go, not where they're going to accurately go, but just a, a loose suggestion. So let's get a sense of where the uh, facial features are going to potentially go. 
Um, so we have, uh, let's put the center of face axis. So it's sort of the line that runs through the center of the face. Sometimes it's curved in this case because the head is looking at us directly. It'll be relatively straight, um, but it's going to be on an angle there. So I'm taking up my brush, running it through the chin, the lips, the nose, all the way to the top of the head, and then bringing my arm across. And it's about that angle that will run sort of down there. So I know that that's the sort of central plane. And let's look at the eyes. The eye line, I'm going to feels about there. It's not halfway, it's sort of a little higher than the halfway mark. That does depend upon the pivot of the head. Um, and we have uh, this sort of higher mark, which is where the eyebrows are going to start to, to sit somewhere here. And so the eyes will be along there. We'll have a shadow of where the nose is, which I'm going to hazard a guess that it's somewhere there. And then the lips are going to be somewhere in there. And then the sort of bottom of the chin and all under there is going to be darker. So that's how I sort of start plotting things, uh, plotting out those facial features. Now let's give a little bit more information. And I do this with shading now. So I make sure my brush, see on my palette, there's not a lot on here. If I just sort of do that, you can see that there's it's very sort of fluffy and dry brush effect. And that's sort of what I'm after. I don't want to put a lot of uh, pigment or, or uh, paint on the portrait at this stage. And it's sort of building up these sort of shadows. So let's focus on these shadow masses. So starting off with the eyes, there's a sort of a shape happening there. Um, and then that takes me up to this shape up here. like that um, and then working from the eyebrow on the left we're going to sort of join that up to the eyebrow on the right and we've got this strong shape happening about here and the eyebrow continues over and the other eye itself is sort of shaded in here so I'm working in masses of shadow and the shadow is the real indica indicator of where the important components of the face are and how to sketch them in. So this is why working from an image that has a good range of tonal values of shadows and midtones and highlights are really crucial. It helps enormously with the, the building up and placing the facial features in the right way. The worst image you can work from is a photograph or a, a live model that's lit with very flat lighting. So, you know, a photograph where the flash has been kept on and it flushes out all those tonal values or sometimes a photograph even taken outside uh, can kill all those values and shadows. So make sure you set yourself up to succeed by using a, a good image. Now, all I'm trying to sort of do, the, the pressure I'm putting on my my shoulders in accuracy. All I'm trying to aim for is is 50%. Okay, I'm just trying to draw with the paintbrush a 50% portrait, and that's such a, a relief to have to try and achieve. I'm not looking to produce something that's perfect. I'm just trying to get something that's 50%. A half good portrait, and a half good portrait is so much easier to paint than than a perfectly accurate portrait. And it's, a, it's more of a psychological thing. It just eases that pressure of, of worry of having to do uh, something. If you kind of go in going, it has to be perfect, it has to be perfect, you'll make the ride a lot more harder for yourself and a lot more bumpy. So just, just sort of I'm relaxing into it and, and seeing what happens. And sometimes you may aim for 50%, you may get more, you may get less, but the, the trick is just don't worry at this stage. This is the, the planning and the figuring out part of the painting process. All this is going to get completely painted over, so it doesn't matter if it goes terribly wrong. But we've got to start somewhere, and this is the sort of the proper proper way to start. So there's no, no gridding or tracing or projecting. We're doing it like the old masters did, the proper way, using the brush and direct painting, painting directly on the canvas. And I think that's the real secret to uh, really painterly paintings and paintings particularly for portraiture that capture real life movement and energy 
and exciting mark making as well. So let's look at the darkness now of that sort of behind. It's all that sort of in shadow over there. It's amazing something starting to emerge already. That's kind of kind. You can see I'm using my finger every now and then just to push it out. You don't have to use your finger. You can use a piece of tissue paper, uh, or you can use a rag to move out. You've got to remember if you are working with oil um, and you're reacting to solvents, you make sure you're not rubbing your eyes or do make sure you wash your hands before you go eating. So you don't want any of uh, those uh, chemicals going in your system. So I love this sort of triangular shape and how it's all sort of coming to a point down here. So we call that the design, the design of the portrait. Um, is sometimes quite interesting. It doesn't always have to be uh, kind of conventional. And then you're often using these lines and also the background uh, colour and painting to sort of help that. So, you know, sometimes I'll take back this bigger brush and push that through just a little bit more just to really emphasise uh, that design. And if I just clean that brush up, you can do the opposite. We can take away. So I might sort of look at that area and think if I uh, want this cleaner, if I find a clean rag and just sort of clean up that area here. Again, that just helps bring the eye up. And this is sort of more playing really. This, this isn't necessarily useful for the, the compositional part, but it's, it'll determine how successful the picture is at the end from a real design point of view, how eye catching it may be from across the room and how well thought out and planned it was from the beginning. And this is why I love working with the brush because you can work in this fluid way. Whereas if I was doing this with a pencil, I'd be very tight and, and committed and I'd be obsessing over things like detail, which is really not helpful for me at this early stage of planning and figuring out what it is I want to really say and achieve uh, through this portrait. So the other thing that um, I could do, if I could put the, uh, the brush down, I'll put that brush. I'm going to take a cleaner uh, brush, another brush, uh, that's the same size. So that brush I did it with the number four. I'm going to take another number four, it's nice and clean. I'm just going to put a little bit of the mineral spirits in, just a tiny bit. And I'm going to use this like an eraser. I'm going to use it to sort of rub out the area. So because of this stain, this almost like a burnt sienna orange colour, I can use this to lift out. And it's a very similar process sometimes if you work with charcoal where you smudge a whole area with charcoal and then you lift out. So I'm taking away that oil paint uh, just to reveal the highlight. Now, of course, you can't do this with acrylic. You can, of course, put white on instead, working with it as an opaque medium, uh, but working uh, with oil almost more in a, in a translucent manner. Now, you don't need to do this, but it just helps determine that relationship between lights and darks and it will help fool the eye into thinking that you're getting something that's looking three-dimensional. And the reason that starts to look that way is because we're maximizing those tonal values, the three main tonal values of highlights, mid-tones, and shadows. And if you can show and demonstrate those three tones of highlight, mid-tone, and shadow, as the main three components, the eye will read it as being something that is three-dimensional. It's a good tip. If ever you have a painting of yours that looks just a little flat and just doesn't quite have the depth that you're looking for, whether it's a portrait or a landscape or a still life, if it looks flat, the answer is a tonal problem. You're not really utilising your full range of lightness and darkness, the full tonal value scale. And then I can start to sort of look at things like correcting and getting those facial features sort of plonked in that little bit further. So I've sort of, I suppose that percentage that I'm looking for now, I want to push it up from 
you know, 50%, which is probably higher as I've worked through. And I want to sort of get it to a, a little bit more of a sort of uh, around about 80%, but no further than that, really. The rest of the uh, accuracy I will achieve through when it comes to physically painting and filling it in. But sometimes for me, that's all that, that I need to do. That's all that's enough at this stage. But I'll just take it just that little bit further, just so I can show you how I would clarify it that little bit more. I've just brought a hint more black. I'm just sort of doing it with a slightly darker tone now. So it's just a teensy weensy bit more black than the red. Again, no terps, just keeping the paint nice and fluffy and light. I don't want this to be full of oil paint. Just keeping it nice and thin. And the, the surface is sort of wet enough as it is. It doesn't need to be any wetter. Well, I'm just gonna bring the photo up the same size. And I'm starting to sort of half close my eyes now just to focus on the main shapes that I can see. So we've got the angle of the eye. We've also got the eye makeup in there as well. So it's sort of ascertain where the eye makeup is and the facial feature itself. And again, try not to think of it as an eye, but think of it as a shape, a unique piece of a jigsaw puzzle or a piece of patchwork quilt that you're just sort of plonking in. And that will just help you to paint what you see, not what you think you see. Don't overthink it. Thinking can quite often be the death of a good painting. So put some music on, half close your eyes and look at your picture objectively and don't think it, paint it see what's really there. Let's take a little bit more, hint more black with the red. Okay, so I'm now gonna work from, uh, so the shadow here that just overlaps the eye on this side. Let's, uh, we creep over to this shadow on the right hand side here. So I'm working kind of, you know, from, from here to here to here. I'm taking these little small journeys, these small steps. I'm not jumping from there to that eye. I'm going, well, how do I get to that eye? Those little journeys, those little points, little distances are far more easier to, to gauge and get right than big distances. So little distances, much easier. Portraiture is hard, so we don't want to make it easy for us. Right, bottom of the eye is going to be sort of down here. And then it sort of starts just to melt away, doesn't it, into the shadow. So just allow that to, just to disappear. Don't, don't look for an edge. If there is no edge, don't put one in. It'll look flat if you try and put a hard line or a, an edge in when there isn't any. So just allow it to disappear. It will read a lot more authentic and realistic if you uh, paint in that manner. Let's look at the shadow of the nose. I just want to make sure I've got that placed in the right uh, way. So. Uh, let's look at this distance from here to here. That, that I mean, feels about right. Quite often, if it feels right, it probably is. It's the instincts that you need to listen to as a painter and a drawer. Your the instincts, your gut. If it feels right, it probably is. If it feels a bit wrong, then again, it, it probably is wrong. You need to look at correcting it using my correcting brush there, just to take away bits that don't seem to work for me. Uh, just checking this shape here looks a little bit iffy. I'm looking at this triangular sort of shape here, that, which is the shadow. Um, just cross-referencing it with what I've done. So just using the correcting brush and pointing that up. And I can see that means that lip needs to come up a little higher where I've originally placed it. I think it could do with coming up by about a millimetre, but it'll make all the difference. Now this way of painting can be done for any genre. I'm using it for portraiture, but it could be done for still life, animal, landscape, even abstract. You can use this way of just figuring it out. And I know there are many artists that sort of get to a painting that just using these one or two colors and, and that's it, they leave it. They, they call that a sort of a finished painting and there is something you know, quite effective about the way paintings like this look. They look kind of sketched and effortless and, and fun. 
and it gives kind of you as a viewer lots to kind of figure out, it gives you job work to do. You don't have to completely paint and say everything. You can leave a lot to the imagination of the viewer. Gone a bit heavy with the black under here, but never mind. Um, down to there, and then, and I can see them the bottom of the chin. It's quite important just to ascertain where that's going to be. Uh, we've got uh, just a light mark of where the jaw is, and then. So a shadow then here, which is the neck. And we'll make that under there just a, a tad darker there, just to show where the bottom of the chin is. And again, squinting down, let's just push that up a little. It'll be under there somewhere. But I'll just, just allow that to melt away. I just want to make sure I get the width here because the jaw could sort of seem a little wide. I need something to slightly indicate that there is um, an edge here, this, the, the sort of the line of the hair. So again, if I just use my cleaning correcting brush, my sort of erasing brush, I think that's sort of going to go here, isn't it? And it's a nicely welcome piece of uh, directional linear mark making that sweep across the braid of the hair. So that's my sort of starting point of, of getting the canvas stained and the initial drawing. It's not perfect, but it's sort of around that sort of 90% of, of enough information for me. The rest of the accuracy and the detail and, and putting the proportions right will come when I start painting in. But first, we're going to block in the portrait.